Hey, welcome to the 72 PC Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. With us this week, we have Tom, who is jamming out with a cat. Look at that guy. And we have Eric. I'm sorry. I love those videos. That's with the that one cat. of I do too. That's one of my favorite ones. I saw <laughs> my favorite one I saw this year was it was in October. And it was uh, when you go outside and the leaves are crunching beneath your feet. And it was that cat. And then it was the Goosebumps theme song. Yeah. It was so good. Um, recently, I've been seeing a lot of different videos with like animals and music. Like um, earlier this year was uh, Puppy Dog Bounce Him in a Box. Oh, yeah. That was a good one, too. One. I like that one a lot. My favorite are Party Parrot. I love dancing birds. I love birds yeah. that are just getting fucking into it. I like the ones that are like headbanging to music. Yep. Wasn't there one with like a, a uh, oh my God, the asshole birds, the white ones with like the yellow crest on top. But oh, like I it was, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the death metal cockatoo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where like, it was just like blast beats and then it starts screaming and you see the cockatoo just start going nuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I just fucking love dancing birds. It's nothing better in the world. By the way, if you guys haven't seen, like, there's, uh, like, a Birds of the World exotic birds thing where it shows, like, the various mating rituals of these beautiful, exotic, tropical birds you have to. It's fucking hilarious. Like, the one that, like, whips open, like, its wings and, like, does a, like, shimmer and shaky dance. It's fucking hilarious. Birds are goofy as fuck. <laughs> the Birds of Paradise from, yep. uh, like, the footage they got from Planet Earth. Yeah, that one. Yeah, did you like they sat for weeks in like <laughs> pitch black? Like it's actually pitch black almost in those shots. That's how good a fucking gear they had for shooting that. Damn, that's impressive. Like I don't know if you ever watched like the after credit roll, like extra explaining of all of the episodes. No, Dude, the shit they went through to get some of those shots, the months of lives mm-hmm. just dedicated to getting six seconds of footage. It's absurd. I, I'm also uh, glad they did it because Planet Earth is one of the best documentaries ever made. Dude, I love Planet Earth. It is so legit. Um, I I love it even more so that like from an evolutionary perspective, birds are just tiny dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. And it, it makes you wonder, like, if birds are that goofy and fucking weird, like what on earth were dinosaurs like? Like, I don't think they were the Jurassic Park run around stomp shit and eat stuff kind of dinosaurs. I like to think that they're walking around like head bobbing, making sweet jams, just generally being a nuisance. Guess fucking I'm... T-Rex is time to mate. He just starts going around like the fucking night <laughs> at the rock berries. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting really sick of that propaganda, guys. Birds aren't real. <laughs> we know this. Uh, my, my bad. My bad. You're right. Okay. I should, I should say I'm a huge fan <laughs> of these colorful flighted government drones. I mean, they should have changed all the batteries by now, right? Like the the well, timeout, yeah. yeah, that should be good. So we should I mean, be okay soon. We were all locked in here because of COVID. That's when they changed the the batteries and the birds. No, no, no. Uh, you you mean we were locked in here so they could change the batteries? Yeah, sorry, sorry. They made up COVID yeah. so they could change yeah, the yeah, batteries yeah. and all the birds. Yep. Yes, exactly. Ah, uh, clearly we're joking. Don't get us on that mist. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get that out there real quick before yeah. all of a sudden we become. Some like, people take oh, things too God. seriously. We're gonna get flagged so. You hard. can't take anything we say on this podcast seriously. You see, this one gaming <laughs> podcast says it isn't real. It ain't real. <laughs> Wear your mask. Watch your wash your hands. Listen to your doctors. Get a vaccine when you're available. Watch well, your hands. Normal. Too. Yeah, watch your hands and wash them. You know, you never know those hands. They're a little shady. <laughs> If they get idle, they do bad things. Yep. <laughs> gotcha. Anyway, so how was y'all's week? <laughs> Busy AF. We Most just need likely. to get a soundboard of me asking that question, or you asking that question, Adam and Tom's canned answer. Yep, that's <laughs> much. it. How busy just is Tom busy this AF. week? Oh, busy. Wow. Big surprise. <laughs> what uh, what more new play... information can you give us? I did get a chance to play some video games, though, which is nice. It's better than last week, where I played basically cyberpunk, and that was it. Yeah. 
we had some of the like last night we we're playing some dota had fantastic game just goddamn epic like i don't i don't want to call it a good game we stopped like it was not fun for the other team i'm sure i enjoyed the hell out of it um i feel like i played well and then the game right after that it was the exact opposite we just got goddamn destroyed just fucking pulverized and then today was uh, another kind of mediocre, not so good game. Yeah, but if you want to get specifics, we should have we should have fucking won that game. That that we got out of hand. But that's it. It was great though. Like last night, that first game, we had five people. We were all playing our A game. It was great. We were pushing together, rotating. Like it's, I love the moments in team games where everything just comes together. And last night, yeah, that first game totally did. Yeah. I would agree. I would agree. Speaking of coming together, nice pass, Adam. Thanks. Good shot. Uh, how was your week, Adam? Eh, sorry. I haven't had any eh. energy this week. I've been kind of in Ooh. a funk. You should get you some gamer fuel. Game. See that? Game, We're game, pitching the product. Time to start paying its work. Oh my God. <laughs> you didn't even say the product name correctly. Uh, G Fuel. Fuel. Sorry. Sorry. They're, they're, they're too gamer to say the word gamer. <laughs> <laughs> I only drink uh, Mountain Dew Code Red. The only drink for gamers. Okay. Mock that all you want. That's my favorite Mountain Dew. I hate Code Red. I hate Red. Code Red. I think it's awful. I love Code Red. Code Red, I think I might even like Livewire more than I do regular Mountain Dew. I love like, Livewire. Uh, obviously, the best Mountain Dew is Baja Blast, and it's not even well, close. Clearly, clearly, um, not even a little close. I I don't know if I agree. I will crave that more than any other one. But if I could have access, I think you can now. But if I had access to it on a daily level, I don't think I would want it as much as the others. It's more of a since I don't get it as often, I cherish the moments I get it. Which I is thought... when you go to Taco Bell. Yes. Which is the best. I mean, it's just the perfect combination. Name a more iconic oh, duo. Cheesy Gordita mm. Crunch, Large Baja Blast. Uh, I, you oh. can't. You can't. So you got, I don't know how familiar you guys are, but um, KFC has their own dedicated Mountain Dew. I don't know if you guys knew that. Oh. No. It's complete dog shit. KFC. KFC sucks. <laughs> like, I, I'm on the record of saying, like, before that, I didn't think there was a bad Mountain Dew. Like, even the purple black one I enjoyed. Dude, the KFC Mountain Dew is dog shit. Like, what flavor what is, is it? it? I think it was gravy. like, I can't remember if it was like some kind of mouth. Gravy, gravy and corn. It's <laughs> just gravy thick and glop through. Ugh. They have to give you an extra wide straw so you could actually drink it. <laughs> no, um, I, th I think if I recall, it was a mango or something. I don't know. It was, it was a oh. different type of, maybe apricot. And that sounds like it would be good because mango is, is great. Yeah, I love mango. But no, it was it was not a good drink. KFC gravy is so good. Yes, Acro, it is good. However, I do not want that as my beverage. <laughs> you are just not American, sir. Unless you're drinking that shit with a straw, get the fuck out. Oh. <laughs> oh. I, I, uh, no, no, no. no um, I, I do have to say, like, I thought, I thought, this is, this is years ago now, but do you remember when, when they were, canning and bottling Baja Blast for a yep. while. Like, mm -hmm. they, it was no longer exclusive. I thought the world had gotten to a better place. I thought we had literally evolved as a species. And then it disappeared. Like, apparently you have to keep fighting for progress because sometimes it doesn't stick around. Yeah. So Taco Bell is involved in some of the best limited time and novelty specialty bullshit. Because Baja yeah. Blast is great. Nacho fries, best fry in all of fast food. I've and they don't run them all the fry. time. Best fry in all, of, even I without just, the nacho sauce, best fry in all of fast food. The nacho sauce, the nacho cheese would be the only reason I would get them. Just, Their like, seasoning on them is excellent. I, just, I don't know. I can't go to a Taco Bell and get fries. Like, Have you had yeah, them? Yeah, it sounds illegal. No, but I'm not going to go to, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I don't like fries as much as you head. in general, oh. but like, I don't know. I, I just I'm I not... didn't get them the first time because I wanted fries. I got them because, oh, the idea of these seasoned fries with nacho cheese sounds pretty good. Yeah, I'll go for that. And then I actually had them like, oh, this is good. They actually do um, 
like you know how they do loaded nachos they do it with loaded fries instead mm. Ooh. it's really good so it's effectively chili cheese fries only it's taco meat i i do have to say i know the nacho bel grande on on the scale of quality nachos it's near the bottom right like if you're looking at real nachos real food the nacho bel grande is kind of a step above garbage but god damn if i wouldn't like clean the plate of two of those guys in a sitting god fucking <laughs> damn like um, no joke I, it's goddamn delicious like i think that meat quality is about the only way they suffer though because in all honesty i don't think nachos is the thing where you get incredible ingredients and it gets insanely better. It gets marginally better for sure. Yeah. But like, I, I'll take the Bel Grande up with against almost any other that I've it's, had. It's about the ratio, right? Like you can easily ruin a plate of nachos by using way too much cheese. I know what I just said is really? illegal, but, but hear what? me out. I agree. I hear agree. Me out. You need a good crunch to sauce ratio. And if you have too much cheese, all the chips get kind of soggy. You can't pick up anything like, it kind of sucks. If if you have just chips and cheese, okay. If you have way too many onions, that'll ruin a good plate. Like, yeah, there's I a lot of ways to onions. fuck up good good nachos. I don't nacho, want soggy nachos. I need a crunch. You need a lot of cheese. I'm not. I'm not agree- oh, yeah. saying that like, yeah. you don't get a lot of cheese, but like if every chip is just doused in cheese, I'm out. Yeah, it's got to be a ratio. The only thing I think you can have a fuck ton of is like jalapenos. But that's also because I'll eat those fuckers straight. Yeah, I'm not really a jalapeno guy. Like, I I get I like- it. I enjoy it sometimes. But I've seen people go way too hard on jalapeno. Like, I don't want jalapeno flavored nachos. I want them having <laughs> topping. I like fresh jalapenos awesome. more, than in the, more than the pickled ones. And everywhere yeah, I don't know. the pickled ones. I kind of like the pickled ones. Just too much vinegar it's a little, for me. Th- there is a lot there, and also we're getting called out, Tom. Acker right. is saying that if you're uh, you're not eating your nachos fast enough, that the chips are getting soggy. That's a good point too. I mean, you're or not the, wrong. Or they're using bad chips. Like you got to have some robust chips. And I think that's okay. the not all, not all chips are created are equal, they? right? Like the yeah. chips Taco Bell uses, they're bad, right? They are. Yeah, they're it's not. They're not good chips. Basically, above cardboard. That's uh, now, the biggest thing, is get nice, thick, crunchy chips, I think, is the best thing you can do for nachos. If you can eat the chips alone without any toppings and still enjoy yourself, it's a good chip. Like Chipotle's nachos? Chipotle's chips are fucking great. They've got the salt, oh, they've got yeah, the, the lime, lime crunch to them. The lime oh, and salt God. together. Oh, It's just goddamn and Then you get and, that and, one, there's always one <laughs> in the bag that has way too much lime and salt, and it's the best yep. chip in the whole... <laughs> what do you mean way too much? You mean there's every other too chip much that has as... way not enough. <laughs> not way too much as in it's actually too much to eat, but way too much as in they didn't intend for them all to be that way. Yeah. Have you ever read their bags? Yeah. Those are good. So, like, I, I, I eat there at work, and I would be alone. And the bag actually talks about that chip, the golden chip. <laughs> that has more lime and salt than all the rest. <laughs> Maybe they do that on purpose. Maybe they have one. I, uh, just like... It just, the self-awareness of it made me smile yeah, and laugh yeah. a little bit. I got something interesting in a, in a bag of Chipotle chips. Um, I pulled out. Nah, sadly not. Um, I pulled out a thick boy. Thick boy. It was, it was clearly something where the cutter didn't go all the way through because to make the chips, I literally just layer tortillas together and chop them up into chip shapes, right? They make them like real chips. Um, But the cutter didn't go all the way through. So you had like a stack of eight chips bound together on one edge, but they were still separated in the middle. So they all got fried appropriately and they caught all the salt and all the lime. It huh. was incredible. I had an accordion of Chipotle chip. <laughs> it was amazing. It's possible. It's like probably top 10 best things to ever happen in my life was eating that guy. I don't think I've had Chipotle in over a year at this point. I That's a mistake. Get, I get DoorDash Chipotle all the time. I, I'm going to get DoorDash Chipotle probably tonight. I'm a frugal ass, and I hate DoorDash because of how much it costs. 
I always do steak. Is a carne asada really that it's, good? It's better than the steak. Really? All right, I'm trying it tonight. It's basically just that. the steak marinated in delicious Ooh. marinade. Okay. I always do half chicken, half steak bowl. Solid. Never burrito. I don't hate their chicken, but it's... I don't ever get the chicken. Uh, there there are fine. days when it's not good. I have, I've had their chicken, like... Especially if you don't get it, like, right at, like, lunch or dinner time. It can be dry. Mm. Sitting that chicken there for too long kind of ruins it. The steak could sit for a while, and it's not going to be bad. It's be a little weird. I just like having multiple types of meat. Yeah. I think it adds some texture to the bowl. I, I appreciate that. But I um I did order carryout for the first time all pandemic. Oh. oh yeah. That's right. I haven't had carryout the entire time of the fucking pandemic. We, there was a uh uh I don't want to call it a bar, but it's a uh, a nice bar restaurant, if that makes sense. Think like a better version of Applebee's. Not like snooty, but a better version. Um the place is called Ram. But um love Ram. they they do growler fills right now for like seven bucks. So we went and got a couple growlers, went ahead and got, I got a nice burger with like jalapenos all over it, nacho chips, nacho cheese, and awesome. I miss good pub style burgers. That yeah. when you pick them up, you know you're going to need like five napkins to look acceptable after <laughs> you're done eating. Yep. You know, I think that's the thing I've missed the most during, during all of this nonsense is I really, the the main thing I want to do, I don't want to go crazy, like, hanging out with people sounds great, but the thing I want the absolute most, I want to walk down the streets, I want to sit in the restaurant that's next to my apartment, I want to pay way too much for a way too mediocre burger, and then pay way too much for an average beer, and sit there and watch sports that I don't have any interest in whatsoever, <laughs> and I think that that sounds like the best shit in the world. Some of their beer is good. And also, oh, I like their beer. It's too expensive for what it is, but I do like it. Um, this place doesn't do it, but there was a bar in Columbus I love because the sports they would show were things like dodgeball and handball. <laughs> nice. Like, that That's is cool. a good fucking time, dude. Nice. <laughs> Sitting around a bar, drinking a beer, watching handball. <laughs> I would go to a sports bar if they only played like ESPN 8, the Ocho stuff. It's enjoyable. I like competition, so I don't, like, I love watching a basketball game. Did you put a table tennis match in front of me? I'll watch that shit, too. Yeah. I think, I think I just have to be weird, and I'm, I'm not going to sit and watch, like, basketball or football or baseball or anything. Like, I'll, I'll watch some hockey. That is my exception. I will no, fucking no. grind some hockey. No one wants to watch baseball. That's no. right, if you're out there. No one wants <laughs> I, I love being at baseball games. Like, if you're at a baseball no. game, you've got the popcorn, you've got your beer, your hot dog. Like, oh, yeah, sign me the fuck up. It's always good just sitting there and chilling. But watching it on TV, I don't know how people do it. I can't. Nah, There's, dog. Sluggers there is kill you guys. About, <laughs> there is a slugger, yeah. There is nothing about Sorry, baseball slugger. that even the game. Like, other pro sports are more enjoyable to be at. And if you're just going for the friend and atmosphere, shit, going to a bar and getting hammered is cheaper than a baseball game. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess your beers aren't 20 bucks at that point. But I do have to say, there's something, like, it's psychosomatic for sure. It's all in my head. But there's something that's just different about paying 20 bucks for, like, a Bud Light and sitting in those really uncomfortable stands. Dude, I just can't believe how expensive beer sports are. It was like twelve dollars for me to get a sixteen ounce metal can of Coors at an oh, NBA yeah. game. Yeah, I would rather but just drink know, water. <laughs> it, it was absolutely part of the environment thing. Yeah, but all yeah. the bars around the game were fine. It's just yeah. at the game was nuts. And the fun thing is, you see people because you know people want to watch the game. So at quarter end, you would see a guy go up there and buy like six, seven beers. And you're just wondering, he's like, hmm, Jesus, that guy dropped this dude stack. alone. Or... <laughs> is it old... friends? That, that's that's where your brain automatically goes. Like, how many people is this for? Is this like three, four guys where it's like a two apiece? Or is this two guys and they're just going ham tonight? <laughs> 
Well, uh, I used to go to, as a kid, I went to an epic, and yes, I am admitting to child abuse. I went to an epic amount of Bengals home games. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, the only thing you can do when you go to Bengals home games, and I, I couldn't because, you know, Cry. I was a child, uh, crying and getting fucking tanked. Uh, <laughs> and it was it was always great because we sat next to the same people all year long. And we Season knew, holders. yep, we knew right. they were going to get tanked. And uh, if it was a losing game, it was going to be fun. If it was a winning game, it was going to be more fun. All because of the people there. Yeah, and uh, so there is something to be said about the idea of season ticket holders. Mm. Because the idea of going to the games and then being around the same people all the time, you get to know them, you get to enjoy them. Yeah. It, that, that is a different experience because you they're your game friends. Like, yeah. you don't see him. Well, eventually you'll probably get to the friendship point at later, but you only hang out with him at games. Yeah. Or, like, at the bar, like, after you drive for an hour in Cincinnati traffic to get to that one sports bar that's really 15 minutes away, but it takes you an hour to get there. Yeah. It, for all events, I think that, like, it's not the alcohol aspect of it, but, mm. like, the pre-gaming at a bar kind of thing. Like I've done some concerts for Adam where I've like I've enjoyed the concerts, but I like the time Adam and I and one time Dobby just kind of spent at the pub beforehand, just chilling, talking, and drinking a beer or two. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, so I mean, uh, all yeah. of the pre-COVID stuff. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I like even even getting caught in traffic sounds kind of no kind of romanticized nope. to me right now. Nope. <laughs> dude i used to drive seattle rush time nope i do not miss that oh when i get caught in traffic i'm sitting on the bus and playing the switch like that's you, my traffic i used to drive to drive dude i had a three-hour uh, drive home one night i'm fuck, good fuck all of that um yeah. so speaking of getting caught in traffic uh i picked up hitman 3 um, hey hey i knew you would what do you think so far uh it's uh, so it has six maps. There are there are six maps in the game. They are yeah. the best six maps in the modern Hitman trilogy so far. Now I've only actually played three of them, but those three are set in high fucking bars for the entire series. It is amazing. Um so there's uh there's a level where you're going to an English manor. I'm going to avoid like story spoilers, even though it's not. Not There's really. Story. I don't think anybody yeah, plays exactly. Hitman for the narrative, Tom. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't even know there was one. <laughs> yeah, I thought there, there were just uh, There, there are cutscenes too. I was like, I, like, I don't want to skip them, but I honestly don't give a shit. I'm there to dress up as a flamingo and kill people in the stands at a, at a uh, F1 race. Like that's why I play Hitman, um, and. One mission, you're at a big-ass English countryside manor. Think, like, Downton Abbey or something like that. Just big-ass manor. And the mission story I decided to play um, was I knocked out a detective who was there to solve a murder. And I ran around interviewing people, finding clues, like Agatha Christie murder mystery style, solving a murder, to then commit a murder right after I solved it. It was fantastic we had to chase around this butler named mr fernsby and uh when i went through this the first time i accidentally knocked mr fernsby the fuck out um and broke that quest line so we reloaded because the game lets you do that if there are important characters submission stories and uh and you decide to fuck it up yeah the game just rolls with it it says oh that was a critical character. Okay, uh, find another way to kill your target, I guess. And you can! Like, that's that's Hitman. Um, the level I'm on right now, I'm still going through it, you don't know who your targets are, which they did this in Hitman 2 on, uh, on one mission that was really cool. Even when you complete the thing, they randomize the guy's appearance every single time, so you still don't know who you're targeting. You have to spend, like, half the level figuring out who this person is so you can then kill them. This That's one is the fun. same way, except 
now your disguises are useless because you are hunting other trained assassins who recognize you through your disguises and are trying to kill you. So now, instead of you being like the elite hunter running around and murdering people and no one can touch you because you're dressed like a cowboy and they'll never suspect that. Now it's everybody knows who you are. You have to run around and you're always looking over your shoulder because, fuck, is that guy going to try to off me? Or is he <laughs> just a dude? Is that just a bartender? Or does he have a pistol? Like, and then... You you sneak around, you overhear some conversations, you kind of deduce, okay, yeah, this guy, oh yeah, he is here for me. He is trying to kill me. And then you have to counter sneak around the people sneaking around to kill them. <laughs> it is so fucking good. Um, and on top of that, I have all of the content from Hitman 1, Hitman 2, Hitman 3, all the DLCs loaded into one package. Uh, IOI was straight up when they said hey we're working on a solution hey we found a solution i have all the games in one package nice new system and the stuff that i unlocked in the second game by like mastering certain levels and locations have carried over so if i want to dress like a clown during the murder mystery i can it's beautiful if i want to <laughs> like walk in at, with a fish as my sole weapon which i have been starting off missions with only the fish, you can do that too. Um, yeah, the, the game is just a great fucking time. I am loving the hell out of this. So the question everyone I think wants to know, does the homing briefcase still exist? Yeah, of course. Fuck yeah. They, uh, I even talked about that. They said, yeah, okay, look, we understand this is a bug. But it's so much fun and people love it so much that we're not going to fix it. Like, enjoy it. Good. Um, that was such a weird thing, but I loved it. <laughs> I I am having such a good time with this game because it is just stupid and mischievous. Uh, I think we were playing and somebody called out, wow, the AI really sucks. But they do. And it's on purpose. They suck so you can have a great time and... You know, oh, that guy totally doesn't see me over this hedge that he really should. But that means I can sneak up and knock out the detective really quick. Do they I've, give you an option to bump up the AI or is it permabat? No. So permabat. Um, you, can, you can bump up the difficulty, which does do a whole lot of things, including, I want to say, preventing um, quick saving so you don't save scum. Because Hitman's a game where, yeah, I've saved scummed a lot. It's most fun when you don't, when you commit to those mistakes and you need to really pull stuff back. Um, Adam, I bet you know how this feels in Metal Gear Solid. If you're like quick saving and save stating all the fucking time, you get caught, you reload, like that's that's fine. But mm -hmm. it, isn't it way more fun to just lean into those mistakes and try to figure a way out of them? Oh yeah, for sure. So uh, I yeah, got- ev Evade the enemies, try to find a duck to hide in until they go away or whatever. I got caught. It was a room. It was under lockdown. I couldn't get out. So I was hiding behind a pillar and people were like walking around the room trying to find me because they knew something happened there. And I got caught. So I had a can of cola and my trusty fish. I, uh, I threw a fish at one of the guys, knocked him out, hit another guy with a can of Coke in the face, knocked him out, took his buddy's clothes and then ran out, hid in the closet, and then just waited out the people. And they knew something was going on. Like, the guards were on higher alert because of that. And it was amazing, because I watched a man in his fucking underwear holding an assault rifle looking for my ass. <laughs> it, was, it was glorious and beautiful. Oh. So, uh, yeah. So uh, be Hitman, best Hitman game. I'm, I'm loving the hell out of this. Um, so, hooking the games together was a little bit annoying, but really worked without a hitch. So when you load up the game, it says, hey, if you have Hitman 2 on other platforms, you know, uh, click here to go to this website to link the accounts together, and we'll just suck everything over. So I did that, logged into my Steam, uh, logged into Epic, uh, made an account on IO's site, or IOI's site, and um, it took about three or four minutes, and they said, okay, Here's all your progression. 
here's the the levels you got. Here's all your unlocks. Um, reload the game, and all your shit should be there. And you know what? Yeah. I reloaded my game. All my shit was there. Hey, it was great. Uh, the only I'm... the only complaint I have about this is right now Hitman Three is in online only mode, and their servers are on fucking fire. So the first night, I, I didn't buy it the first night. I bought it like five days after. Um, their servers are on fire. I'm in the middle of a mission and a big dialog box pops up and it says, oh, you lost connection to the, the Hitman servers. Uh, click here to retry. And I click. And it's like, oh, click here to retry again. And I keep clicking. And it takes like five or six times, but it kept happening. Like every five minutes, it would lose connectivity. I would need to hit retry. Like in the flow of a mission, I would need to retry. Wow. And the one time I hit cancel, it just exited the game. Like that fucking sucks. I wish they wouldn't I, have done that, but the game is good enough that it's not super impactful. It just kind of sucks. So what does this mean for consoles? Because PCs, I mean, in air, but there's the assumption of PC is always online. Yeah. Consoles, like there is definitively times when we know people won't have online access to consoles. Yeah. How, how are they getting around that? I got me. Sorry, you can't play. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if you've got the disc, yeah, maybe you can play like with the disc in the console. But like, if you've downloaded it, I no no idea. Because like, I got it with things with like Mag back on the PS3. The gameplay was online only. Yeah, like it, it was required to play the game. Same with like Titanfall. But this, I mean, you're not playing with other people, are you? Like, there's no Dark Soulsian kind of crossover, is there? There are multiplayer aspects, but they're not baked into the single player game. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite multiplayer things, and this was this has been a thing in Hitman for a while now, um, is the community contracts. So players can pick random or like uh, specific NPCs out in a level and say, okay, you have to kill these four people with a sword well dressed up as a flamingo without getting caught. And by the way, you'll start in this area of the level that's completely on the other side with a bunch of guards in your way. Good fucking luck. And you'll compete on that community contract for the very best, uh, like, scores, times, whatever you're optimizing for. It is that's really, fun. really cool. I have played some truly unique missions. Um, I think this one was, like, Live by the Sword or something. And... Like, it was just fucking stupid and hilarious and fun to try to make everything work. Um, and some of the missions are elusive, which means you get a set amount of tries to try to take this thing on before it just locks out. So, oh, cool. Without quick saves. So, yeah, commit to those mistakes and lean into it and try to try to make it happen. I know some people really don't like that that aspect, especially compared to the older Hitman games, because... Yeah, there's there's going to be a point in time where you get locked out of content because you fucked something up. But it does have a roguelike element to it, which I really do like. Yeah, I I have both sides of the coin. Like, I get the completionist aspect, but, like, that kind of element of it isn't designed for someone to have 100% completion. That's not yeah. what it's there for. It's there for mm -hmm. the freshness aspect. Yeah. yeah. And novelty, of course. Yeah. Like, I, I think that kind of system is really fucking cool and can really extend the life of a game yeah i mean i've been thinking this for a while at some point i got to get into the new hitmans like so much of that gameplay sounds like it'd be so enjoyable i i would wait um until like hitman one and two are on sale pick those up or pick up hitman two uh it's got like a dlc for one to be applied to two Buy that on the cheap, then get Hitman 3 if you really like the gameplay. And then you can suck everything over and have all three games in one package. I also would not be surprised if they built like a collector's edition. Here's all Hitman 1, 2, and 3 World of Assassination games and like one sixty dollars price. That's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Yeah. Is it? I'm assuming it'll do kind of the Halo-esque thing where it's Hitman 1, 2, and 3, but all in the engine of 3. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's how it works right now. That's what I've got currently installed on my machine um and if if you want to like hitman one and two are really cheap 
like especially around steam sale time pick that shit up because it is some of the best fun you'll have for some of the least money yeah it, it's and, not a money thing for me it's a i time time investment yeah 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 like i it's not that i don't have time to play games i have time and i play games but i'm dedicated to the games that i play right now yeah in a weird way like dota consumes a fuck ton of time yeah and now there's a new one that's slowly creeping in and taking more time because holy shit slap shot rebounds a lot of fun and requires a lot of mechanical mastery oh. holy shit that game's a yeah blast. i saw you guys playing that it's whimsical but at the same time like there's mechanics in that game where like it's hard the momentum in that game is ultra realistic to a fault for a game mm-hmm. by design though like you have to hit the uh, effectively a break button to help you change momentum or to keep you in position or to receive a pass and then to pass the puck you um you don't hit a to pass you move the mouse left and right to swing clockwise and counterclockwise oh okay so you have to some more physics based like like rocket yes almost yes exactly like if i want to shoot i'll swing left if i want to pass i swing left i determine the difference by how fast and far i swing because there is as far as the game's concerned there is no concept of pass compared to shoot there is just you're swinging when are you stopping your swing this is going to be the trajectory of the puck based on that Mm -hmm. and they offer you an option when you're swinging to tilt your stick to like get lift and do like top shelf shots and stuff like that oh nice i I have to admit i saw like just basically just that clip from last uh the last week's podcast where we did the plays of the month thing and yeah. i did not expect any sort of depth from this game <laughs> like just looking at it i was just like ah oh, just a casual fun little you know it's uh, it's not going to be a game but... that sticks but well it, yeah it's definitely got the complexity yeah i did not expect that that's cool though but it, i don't want to overstate. like it's not like doing a uh flip reset double touch kind of bullshit it's just the mecha- the core mechanics are what's difficult to learn. Mm-hmm. Where well, Rocket League, like the core mechanics of drive, jump, flip are all relatively easy. It isn't until you start getting into the aerial and control the aerial that you start fighting the momentum a lot more. Yeah, I can see that. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's free. So that that's another that's really big aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Free 99. Um <laughs> I might end up getting the supporter pack just because I think it's a good game. I want to support the devs, but it's, it's just a lot of fun. And it's like, we'll through the week, we'll play two or three matches at Dota. The last one sometimes gets you a little burnout. We're like, well, got like a half hour before I'm really wanting to go to bed. Do I really want to invest in another game of Dota or fuck it? Let's boot up slap shot, get a few games of that in before the end of the night. So yeah, I it, it's going it a really nice niche. I'm going to need to start playing that because you guys are, are getting in on that grind. Yeah, we're, we're getting better. Um, at this point, I probably got like six, seven hours on it. So I'm starting to actually be able to do a little bit of stuff. And it's funny because like uh, Heroic Saint, myself and Dobby are playing a lot. As, uh, Predatrix is playing some. I don't think any of us are the same level on any single part. Like I'm really good at the backhand stuff. Alex is great at shooting. Scott's just kind of, I don't know, Scott, Scott. So it's just really interesting how like there's different aspects to it that different people kind of pick up faster than others. But yeah, it's a good game. Pick it up. It's free. Free 99. So very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Adam, am I reading this right? You're starting to play inside again? Uh, I'm not starting to play it again. I just, um, I don't know. I kind of wanted to play something. And like I said, I didn't really have any energy one day. I didn't want to play anything that was like super involved. I just wanted to kind of chill out. And and I, re- I was listening to another podcast actually, and they brought up Inside. And I was like, man, I hadn't played that in forever. That was such a good game. So I booted up Inside. And uh, because I'd already beaten the game, it's nice because you can just select, like really easily select what chapter or part you want to play. So I like I played the nice. beginning of the game a little bit and then I skipped a couple of the puzzles and played a section in the middle that I thought was really cool and then I I skipped some of that stuff and oh I forgot about this part and 
it, it was just a lot of fun. I played the whole ending sequence again and watched that, which was just a blast. I Inside was just one of the most well-made games I've played, and it was just, I don't know, it's just a collection of so many cool things. Excellent visual design. Uh, the sound design is insane. The like the world building super like not clear story <laughs> like it's just everything about it is just really cool. Um, I don't know if we ever talked about this, but did you know that when the dude was making the soundtrack, he routed some of the audio through an actual human skull and recorded it? The fuck. What so, <laughs> he was in it, so so Inside is kind of a creepy game. Like it's not outright horror, but it does have some definite like tension and creepiness to it. And uh, initially, I guess when they were doing the soundtrack, he was using synthesizers and stuff because he he kind of liked the like eighties you know Stranger Things sort of vibe. But then they were putting it in, and he didn't like it because it was a little too I don't know. Not, not cheesy, but like it didn't Beam? fit that kind of creepy, whatever. So he <laughs> got somehow he got this human skull, and he was gonna route some of the audio into it, and then record the the resonance from the skull with contact microphones, which are basically just like regular microphones, but instead of um, sensing the vibrations in the air, it senses the vibrations on a surface. So he so he put these around this human skull, <laughs> and he was like, um. Just to see how it would alter the sound and see if it would, I don't know, add, add a creepiness to it. Like, you know how when you record your voice, it doesn't sound anything like you hear it when you're actually speaking? Mm -hmm. That's because yeah. the sound that you make with your vocal cords is vibrating through your jaw and your skull and, and all of that. And then it influences the way you hear things. So I think he was wanting to use that as kind of a, a, a way to change the sound of the soundtrack. So I guess it was an experiment and it sounded like kind of bad but with some post-processing afterwards it, it added a really cool character to the sound so that's all good and well mm -hmm. how the fuck does one get a hold of a human skull i if don't know ask, i mean you could person. murder somebody um you could dig a grave up i'm sure that there are legal ways of attaining one like i don't know <laughs> so, <laughs> it actually reminds me of a, a story from when i was uh working my my tech tech job in college. Oh, All God. right. <laughs> Come so, over. so, uh, I was at the IT help desk and, um, somebody decided the smartest thing to do. And just in case somebody was having trouble, they put the IT help desk phone number on every fucking single page of the school's website. So we got calls for everything from, Hey, uh, I need to pay my tuition to how do I sign up for classes to, uh, hey, can I get help with my computer, which was the only legitimate call. Um, I was working one Saturday morning. Literally no one was there. I was the only one in the office. Like I was only there or I was there from 8 a.m. to noon. And then the, the full timers took over. So totally alone. I get a call. Uh, hey, uh, yeah, I. This is Doug. I got a dead body here. And I said, oh, um, yeah, uh, you might just want to call, like, I mean, if if you think it's a crime, like, call 911, but otherwise, like, uh, I guess here's the police's non-emergency number. Uh, this is the computer help desk. We don't really deal with dead bodies. <laughs> <much. laughs> sure. He's like, no, it's a donation for medical sciences. I was like, oh, motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> so I had to look up in our company, in our company wiki, and it turns out, or uh, our school wiki, and it turns out, yeah, there's some dude's cell phone number listed on a wiki page. Hey, if you get a weekend call for a dead cadaver, call, call like Fred here at this number. Here's a cell. And I call Fred. I was like, hey, I just got a call. I'm the IT guy. They told me that you, they got a dead body. He's like, oh, cool. I haven't pulled up to this building. Like, <laughs> sure, man. <laughs> Whatever what? you say. Was he the sound designer and composer for Playdead? <laughs> uh, he he might have been. So, yeah, that was that was fucking great. 
That was actually one of the very first places I went to Wright State. When I was in high school, there was a big class visit we did for physics, and they took us to the med lab or the the medical lab where they did all the cadavers and they had cadavers out while we were there. Like, oh, this is really interesting but weird for a high school tour, but okay. <laughs> uh, what about you, Tom? What other games you got? Uh, so um, I played some Beat Saber last night. You and did? uh yeah setting some high scores uh the mods are catching up finally again um like uh yeah beat saber had some big ass updates and it's taken a while for the mods to get back into gear and uh yeah they they have so playing some stuff some new stuff some old stuff and it's it's always fun i think i put 75 minutes in last night uh which was great uh that's that's really about it that's that's all i got for beat saber um a little bit of Pavlov, a very minor amount of Red Dead 2. Nothing to really talk about there, and I think that's it. Like, it's just been Hitman and Dota for me. The rare actually got Tom a little... short game week. Yeah. yeah. I actually got in a little non-podcast Rocket League. Oh, yeah? And oh. I played ranks. And I was ranking in with, like, low champs, high diamonds. And what I'm going to say might strike people as odd, controversial or whatever, but I think some of the higher ranked areas have softened in skill. Oh, were you surprised how bad everybody was? <laughs> like I haven't played leg- like what we're doing right now. I don't consider legitimate rocket league. Like I'm yeah, that's brain true. dead. Just kind of doing yeah. it while we're talking. Mm-hmm. Um, I was going toe to toe with them. Like, not missing a beat. I wasn't getting outplayed. And I had been away from that kind of Rocket League for probably close to two months now, maybe three. Oh, yeah. So I know what happens with that kind of break traditionally in Rocket League. I know how I should have been performing compared to my peers. <laughs> that just wasn't the case. Yeah. And it's not because I got better during that three months. <laughs> I mean, you could have gotten a little better. Sometimes taking a break actually <laughs> can help. Yes. But, no, I get what you I- mean, though. Like, I'm not saying that's what it was. Like, to me, a week or two is that magic number where I come back, bad habits are lost, and I don't have the muscle memory to keep doing bad habits so I can actually reabsorb and relearn. Mm -hmm. This was, I legitimately think that people of my skill have actually progressed higher because of the influx of new players. Yeah. Now, that's also because there there was a soft reset this season, too, wasn't there? So, yes, there was. I'm sure it has even you know set, settled settled even too. more yeah so i think it was and quite a while I, before high ranked people were actually getting the high ranks that they would would have normally had yes and i do want to say like i'm talking like high diamond high low champ area like ssl is still going to be like cream of the fucking crop mm-hmm. so like i'm not trying to blaspheme that kind of stuff i'm just saying in general like i know the lower ranks are harder now but I think that when you get to like the mid upper diamond area, that it's a little softer than it used to be. Okay. Huh. Which kind of caught me off guard. I can't even even remember the last ranked game I played. I'm pretty sure I don't I'm have any still ranks. I'm calibrating. Anymore. Yeah, I'm calibrating on threes right now. This is the first one I played all season. I don't oh, wow. really play ranked uh, at all. Um, the only ranked I play is, uh, I guess, technically extra mode, since those are ranked now. But, like, yeah. Snow Day, Rumble, I'll I'll play those, but I don't know. Like, it's it's fine, but I have stopped grinding Rocket League, I think, because I'm now grinding Dota. <laughs> so my life has gotten significantly worse. Yeah. Like, I, I had a big step in my Dota life today. Actually had a coaching session today. Oh. oh. So, Interesting. yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I not, done uh, that. Come on. Like, okay, you got to get kills. You got to not get killed. You got to take towers. You can't lose towers. You're done. All right, you owe me $100. <laughs> hey, <laughs> thankfully, like, these guys are like 25 bucks an hour session kind of thing. So it's not that bad. But um, it's amazing. Like, I, I'm, I'm familiar with it. Well, we're 72 pin connector. We have Josh. Like, I'm familiar with the concept of coaching and what it does and how it's done. Like, I've sat in on some of the bigger sessions he was doing. But it still gets me, like, he was pointing stuff out to uh, Dobby, and I was like, shit, that's kind of obvious, but how the fuck are we missing that? (laughs) Literally the very next game, 
huge difference because we started to implement some of that stuff. And it's just to speak to anyone, you don't have to want to do it professionally, but if you actually want to get better and you feel like you're hitting a wall, don't be afraid if you have like 15, 20 bucks you can spare to look into maybe getting a session with a coach, like any kind of game. It can make a really big difference if you actually want to try to get better. So sure. where are you finding these coaches? Like I can get on Fiverr and ask any Yahoo to coach me, right? But I don't know. How do you figure out like who is quality and who's just being shit, right? Like if I wanted to pay Josh to coach me at Rocket League, I can easily find his credentials. Oh, you manage an RC, uh, RLCS level team. This guy probably knows what the fuck he's doing. But like if somebody asked me to coach them for Rocket League, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I can sure sound good. Ratings and reviews. All right. But I, I will say like, this is my first session with this dude. He was pointing out things like I've been doing gamer class and stuff like that. So I've been listening to a lot of pro talk too. Mm. And like what he's saying isn't different from that. It's just, okay. it's the difference between getting gen generalized tips from pros talking positions and knowing general pitfalls and getting a dude looking at your exact replay and saying, why were you doing this? That was fucking stupid. You made this mistake right here. Here's what you should have been doing. All right. And getting that more pinpoint feedback. Like even if the dude's not as good as other coaches, still getting that kind of feedback can really help. Hopefully and it was general, a little nicer about it than that though. I like <laughs> Bront coaches. Like I grew up in athletics and in a weird way, a competitive marching band where our director was a perfectionist. I like bluntness. I don't want it sugarcoated. Tell me what the fuck I'm doing wrong quickly so I can learn how to address it quickly. Fair. But I also know that I... But you can do that without yeah. calling somebody stupid. Oh, he didn't call me stupid. <laughs> it, 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 it's never calling you stupid. It's saying, yeah. you fucked up. Yeah. Or that was a stupid decision. Like that kind of stuff. He'd never said the word stupid. But like, I'm okay with saying like, hey, that was a really dumb play. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. So That's like I, I don't know I, I think I kind of have thick skin when it comes to the criticism end though too. For sure. A professionally with my work it happens a lot, but also just I'm used to getting coached in a way that they're cursing at you and yelling at you sometimes <laughs> in passion. <laughs> but the same. But I, to be fair, a good coach if they do that they also have to be the same person that when you do well they like raise you up on their fucking shoulders and like praise you as well. It can't just be purely wreck you. Did if your coach didn't kick a trash can and call you fucking embarrassing, they're not a real coach. Fucking embarrassing. <laughs> Love it. Love it. If you haven't watched Leonard Kenny, watch that shit. Great show. Uh anyway. Sorry. I, I had I had to get that out. Um, yeah. Um, I also did a little bit of EFT. I saw you were doing some, Adam. How'd your runs go today? I didn't do any runs. Oh, you didn't do? No, I didn't end up playing. Uh, I launched just, it. I did some stuff and didn't really. That play is any the raids. only game I've ever done that where I've launched the game, spent an hour in the game, but never played. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing some hideout stuff today where I'm trying to make some money on like um, power cords, I think, to wire. I think you were the one that told me about yeah. doing that. Yeah, that's a decent one. So pop on my generator, play a couple raids, get something set, turn it off. But I did get some quests done, some that have been pestering me for a while. Oh, yeah? Finally got the graphics cards out of custom that I had done two other times and forgot to turn in. <laughs> That's good. So for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Tarkov, uh, the way some of the quests work, whenever you have to fetch an item out of a level, if you get the item and die, you still have to do it again. You have to actually extract with the item. And then once you extract with that item, it goes into this internal inventory system where it's on your character. And if you forget to turn it in and go to another raid and die, you lose it. So you have to do the quest all over uh, again. I did that twice on accident. Oh, that sucks. So yeah, and then I had a really good raid where it started with, I'm just going to play really chill with a pistol. Within 30 seconds, I killed a PMC, took all his shit, and it turned into a real raid real quick. Oh, nice. And it went really well. I have one more pistol kill to go on a PMC. I'm pretty happy with that. Nice. Without doing it at factory. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm sure you'll get it in no time. Yeah. I, I've been doing a lot of pistol runs, so yeah. 
Got my economy back up now, though, so I can actually play play again. Hey. Yeah. Have to get some runs in soon. Yeah. I think I'm going to do a little bit tomorrow morning if you're around. Uh, Yeah. I'm never not around. <laughs> yeah. No, but that, that's all I am. It's like it's, <laughs> it's COVID time, and it's not great fishing time. So And hunting yeah. season's particularly done. So it's games. Games. <sighs> well, fellas. Games. I, mean, I, I played a new game. Oh, oh you did? Yeah, I played a launch day game, and it's an Xbox exclusive. What? What? It, it's what are you playing? The medium. Xbox exclusive? I thought that was on Steam. Nope. It's Xbox exclusive, which means it's on the Xbox Game Pass for PC, which is kind of weird. Oh. <laughs> nice. But yeah, it was, it was built as like a Series X exclusive, but then they launched it on Game Pass, by the way, on launch day. Which I think is cool. So Microsoft's I didn't even have to pay to play. That. Like I already had the Game Pass, so I could just play this new game on launch day. So nice. that's, that's pretty cool. How um, is it? It's all right. It's okay. It's um. So it's by Bloober Team, which is the, the developer that made Layers of Fear and The Observer and Blair Witch. And it definitely feels like one of their games, but it is a departure. So this one is really heavily Silent Hill inspired. So you actually have like third person perspective, uh, mostly fixed camera angles and stuff, which is cool. Um, it is a horror game too. And it's not like tank controls, straight up fixed cameras, like it, it still it changes the camera angles and is more cinematic, kind of like those games of that era. But the cameras do still move a little bit, and then the controls are, you know, much more intuitive. Where your your guy actually moves the direction you move your analog stick, not just, you know, rotating and you don't have to know like some arbitrary. Yeah, I fucking hated that having to know the arbitrary direction to go, even though it's not oriented to your character at all. I mean, it is. I, I, well, yeah, I know what you mean, but yeah. Yeah, it um, made some of the old games a little clunky. Yeah. I never so, actually minded that, but I think it's because I spent so much time playing old school Resident Evil that mm -hmm. it just kind of made sense. Yeah. Um, but no, the, the controls work out pretty well. If you played the Resident Evil 1 remake, they had the alternate control scheme so that people didn't have to play the tank controls, and it works really well. Um, you, you basically just... you know, Your analog stick works in whatever direction... Uh, based on the camera positioning but if you move into um, a new scene where the camera changes and you keep holding the analog stick your your player will still go forward in the same direction they were going oh, uh, thank God. on the old camera relative and then as soon as you move the analog stick again then it changes direction so it's pretty intuitive it's not i mean the controls overall are still a little sluggish but that's kind of the point i guess like that's how those games always are yeah. Um, so that's not too bad. But um, the main gimmick of the whole thing, I guess, is they're doing this like split screen thing where they're rendering the game twice. So basically, you play as a medium. You have like these, you know, mind powers and everything, and you end up like kind of seeing and being in this alternate reality of the world kind of like a it's not hell but it's like some kind of weird in between spiritual hell horror world right um and they'll actually like there will be sections of the game where it actually literally split screens the game and you have the hell world version and the real world version running at the same time and Ooh. there are there are differences between the two worlds and they use that as their kind of puzzle mechanic so like Maybe there's a staircase in the horror world that all goes all the way up to the next floor, but in the real world, the staircase is broken. So you can't go there in either world because you're kind of locked to your physical body. Um, so they use the puzzle mechanics like that where you have to kind of interact with things between the two worlds um, to kind of solve puzzles and stuff. And it's kind of cool, cool because they're both on the screen at the same time and you go up to interact with something. Well, there's an interact button for the spirit world and there's an interact button for the real world they kind of separate that in a way so it, it's pretty cool um nice. the only thing is like i feel like they can do a lot more with it like it's a it's a cool idea to have those two worlds like that and 
that was a lot of their marketing. But so many of the puzzles are not very hard. Like it's just a matter of using your your character abilities and just like figuring out which thing to to hit X on. Like the, yeah. the de- like they could have had so much more depth, I think, in the gameplay. Do you think the depth might come later and this is kind of softening people into it? Or do you think like, hey, this is probably all they're really gonna do with it? Um, I mean, the dev studio isn't known for their gameplay mechanics they're known for their atmosphere and horror which by the way is fantastic i mean the atmosphere is really cool the sound design is good the music is incredible which by the way was written by the dude that did the silent hill music so no surprise there music is fantastic uh the graphics are pretty good uh, they're not it doesn't run well at all Ooh. it's i mean the split screen sections, it's literally running two copies of the game, right? Because you have separate post-processing effects and separate, you know, all kinds of stuff that has to be rendered um, basically twice. So the the performance per, you know, your P- PC is not good. Um, I have a... Do you think it was maybe hmm? optimized for Xbox instead? Um... Well, I don't know. I mean, I know on the Xbox it only runs at 30 FPS. Mm. Um, but no, like I have a pretty beefy PC. It's a I have a 2080 Super and a 3900X CPU, and I'm getting like 60 with dips lower. Ooh. Yeah. Sounds kind of rough. Yeah, it's pretty rough. But you know, I. I get it though. Like they're doing a, a new gameplay mechanic thing that has to, I'm sure there's a lot of technical limitations and I don't know the best way to do that because I'm not a programmer, but so I'll give them a little leeway on that for sure. Just because, um, yeah, but yeah, overall I'm kind of, I don't know. I just feel like it could be way better than it is. I mean, the cool thing is, and hopefully like we've seen this with other games where one game introduces a mechanic and it seems really fucking cool. And then another game is the one that will actually implement it in a way that is meaningful. So like hopefully yeah. like this dual world thing in a horror game, like that's a really cool concept. Yeah. And I think a horror game is a really good space where you can really pull out like the spiritual world and have like two worlds at once. Mm-hmm. So I really hope someone pulls it off and it doesn't turn into another fucking system like um, the Nemesis system where everyone hopes to get it in somewhere else and it never happens. Yeah. Ooh. Well, so actually, there was a uh, a great video on the Nemesis system by Mark Brown of Game Maker's Toolkit that I watched through uh, just yesterday, uh, where he dove into some of the tech behind it. I think the reason that you don't see the Nemesis system anywhere else, uh, WB actually has a patent on it. What? How? You got me. But yeah, that's why you don't see the Nemesis system fucking anywhere, because he said the exact same thing. He said when this came out, everybody expected it to be everywhere. But WB's got a patent, because Mark Brown is, is British, so it's patent instead of patent. Um, <laughs> I was wondering if that and, was intentional. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's why you don't see it, because game devs don't want to pay or potentially get sued. Uh, because uh, do you guys remember The Simpsons Road Rage? They were actually sued by Sega for using some uh, UI elements that Crazy Ta- uh, t- yeah, crazy Taxi had a patent on. Hmm. Um, so yeah, it's it's a thing. Sorry. That sucks. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> um, I do want to clarify something for chat. When Adam called it an Xbox exclusive, so any more being an Xbox exclusive doesn't mean it's not on PC. It just means Microsoft puts it on Game Pass, and the Game Pass is exposed through platforms like Epic and Steam. Just want to call that out. That's oh, why, yeah, like, it yeah, yeah. seems weird to call an Xbox exclusive, but technically, yeah. it's it, it's what Microsoft's doing. It's for them most things. It's no longer technically Xbox exclusive. It's Microsoft exclusive. Is probably the better way for people to view it now. And I love that they're doing it. Like they're like you said, they're putting launch titles on there. As soon as they launch, it's excellent. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm going to buy it on Steam and run it on Linux. Might be Microsoft exclusive, but they can't stop me. I can't read. <laughs> you already have Tom. Game Pass, How Tom. Just make... install it and play it. 
I know. <laughs> he needs okay. to make it hard. It's what he does. He has to make things difficult. Yeah. Yep. Always and uh, forever. All right. Um, I think that's it. Anyone have any other games or wanting to get out there? Not really, no. no. All right. Well, let's uh, get on into some news, shall we? No. Um. So Steam, once again, no stranger to this kind of litigation, is potentially going to get sued for anti-competitive behavior. In the realm of, I don't want to say price fixing, but kind of like price fixing, where they're forcing developers to say whatever price you're putting the game on for us, you can't have it lower anywhere else. So let's say, um, I just blanked on any, any dev house. Let's say dev XYZ is putting their game on Steam for 20 bucks. They can't put it on Epic for 19 with an agreement that they signed with Steam. And this is interesting because Steam takes more margin. So let's say Steam takes a 30% cut, which is what they do. And a developer wants to make $7. They'll put the game on Steam, so they make uh, $10, so they make 7 At Epic, they can put that same game for eight fifty dollars and make 7 But because of their Steam agreement, they're not allowed to do that. So now I think it's over in Europe. There's actually some lawsuit coming out against Valve saying, listen, you're artificially holding the price of games up higher than it needs to be because they can't actually drop it on other platforms and cause competition. So Valve's response to the whole thing is, look, we do this to prevent review bombing um, because if a dev charges more on Steam because Valve takes a bigger cut than they do on Epic, they could get review bombed from people saying, oh, this game is $12 over here, but it's only $10 over here. And yeah, I, I get that. But frankly, it's a shitty fucking excuse. Like saying that you have to normalize the price across all stores is at least to, to a non, like, non-lawyer person such as myself, an average consumer, that's pretty fucking shady. Like, I think it could be okay. I think it could be okay if they, on their terms, would also agree to only put the fees of the other platforms, like make it a complete level playing field. Yeah. As it is, or Steam charges more fees than any other platform out there because they have the market share. So it is, yeah. it's, it's fucking weird, man. They are locking people into this and they have to play ball because if you're not on Steam, you're going to get left in the fucking dust. Yep. True. Quick shout uh, out to Rel know- Atlas for the raid. Thanks for joining everybody. We're just recording the podcast. We're talking about some stuff, about some general gaming stuff. Thanks for, uh, thanks for that, man. I, uh, yeah, I do have to say, though, like in response to your comment that if you're not on Steam, you're not anywhere and you're not making the bank. Um, IOI Interactive for Hitman 3 has already made back the cost of development, and they released exclusively on Epic for, I believe, a year. So uh, you can make money other places. You you can. I More so now than ever. It's I mean, harder. For sure. It's harder, and they're an established franchise that people were anticipating. Yeah, I think that's a big part of that, too. Yeah, They might have, have been draw. able to do this. Exactly. They might have been able to do it as an independent release on a single launcher. Oh. They still probably would have done that. Speaking of independent, um, this is gonna sound weird. Um, Hitman Three is an indie game. It was developed and published fully by IOI. There are no other publishers involved, so technically, that makes them an indie developer. Well, okay. wouldn't that make like Madden <laughs> an indie game though? By the same right? <laughs> yes, yes, <it> <laughs> and any Ubisoft game. EA, the biggest indie developer in the country or in the world. <laughs> no, I, I get what you're saying though. I, I do appreciate that. Um, fuck, who was the holder of that? Was it um Activision? Square Enix. Square, Square. Yeah, there we go. I, I couldn't remember who it was. I do appreciate that they let them walk with the IP. That was a really yeah. classy move. Yeah. Uh, actually, if I remember correctly, Square is still a minority shareholder in IOI. Like they didn't completely cut them off. They just said, we don't really see us being in, like, hardcore business with you. But we'll be an investor. Yeah, but I mean, what I mean by that, though, is Square could have said, yeah, you guys can walk, fine. You're not taking fucking Hitman with you. Yeah, you know, Square, even, uh, like, in uh, Noclip did several documentaries with IOI. um, And they said, yeah, it was a period of turmoil. Yeah, it really sucked to have our parent company drop us like that. But 
they were great throughout the whole process. Like, there's no bad blood between IOI and Square, which is fucking great to see. I mean, like, business breakups, I mean, any breakups are never fun for anyone. But if you can remain classy through the whole thing, more power to you. Yeah, it's like mom and dad still really are having a friendly relationship, so the kids have a good time. Yeah. Us being the kids, because God damn it, we want Hitman. Damn right we do. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, on to the next. CD Projekt Red is releasing modding libraries. In other yep. words, community, before, fix our game. I was going to say, and before <laughs> the modders fix all the bugs before CD Projekt Red does. Yep. Uh, this is this is going to turn into a straight up Bethesda situation. Um, yep. A lot of a lot of people are reporting this as, oh look, CD Projekt Red released gaming or modding tools. They didn't release modding tooling. They said that we understand that most modders just make their own tooling because they're going to spend way more time on something like that and make it way more extendable than we will. So here's the libraries to hook into the game. Make your own fucking tools because you will anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Which, yeah, cool. I, I like it, but I can't read it any differently than fix this game game for us. <laughs> Please. <laughs> we don't know what we're doing. Please fix CD Projekt Please fix us our cyberpunk. As long as they don't do the Bethesda thing of the modders fix it, and then they force the modders to sell the mods, and they won't allow them to give it for free. Well, Bethesda I, never forced the modders to sell any. They forced them to put it into a marketplace, though. No, they did not force them to do anything like that. I thought they didn't they do. I thought they did all mods through their own thing for a minute, and then no. they repelled it. On 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 console, yeah. On PC, no. It was always a full free open modding marketplace. Well, let's didn't, be honest. There's a lot of fucking console people to have this game. Yeah, didn't but some, nobody like, mods on console. No yeah. one mods on console. It's not a thing that happens. Didn't somebody make a mod where you could bang Keanu Reeves, and they were like, "Hey, don't don't do that." <laughs> Yes, um, <laughs> I, I read an article where it explicitly was calling like, out that they're not going to allow that. <laughs> you released mining tools. What did you think was going to happen? I mean, what are they going to do, right? Like, if, <laughs> if somebody just puts it on a website and you download it, like, what the fuck are they going to do? Yeah, they can sue the mod developer, but that doesn't really get rid of the issue. It's like and all it's the fucking patches for The Sims. Like, what the fuck is EA going to do here? Nothing. It's the, the internet, man. It's just going to happen. The difference is this is like a direct likeness of a person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've... <laughs> 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 I'll leave that one away. Yeah, yeah. Let's not, let's not touch that. The talk. internet, dude. Things are going to happen. <laughs> Things are going to get weird. What was it? Rule tw I can't remember. Rule, Rule 23 34. or Rule, uh, 34. Yeah. yeah. 23 is different. Very different. Oh, God. Oh, 4chan. How oh, the no. world is a better place with you being forgotten. Anyway. <laughs> uh, moving on. Neat. Tom, I'll let you touch this one because I didn't get a chance to actually read through all of it. Uh, yeah. So um, Riot Games, uh, my controller is completely frozen up, so I'm going to get kicked. Sorry, guys. Um, huh? Oh. Yeah. Um, Riot Games uh, is trying to evade a gender discrimination suit. Um, so there is a gender discrimination class action lawsuit against Riot Games. Uh, and they said, oh, we, we don't want to go to a lawsuit. You guys are going to have to arbitrate. Yeah. Yeah, because we can win that. Uh, please. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we'll see what happens with that. But uh, come on, Where's Riot. This, where you is know. this happening? Is this in the ch uh, Chinese or the? I don't know. No, I, I believe I believe in this China is, is in America or. I believe this is in America. Um, okay. So there's, there's a lot of companies that try to force arbitration, um, and they're trying to say, "Oh no, we we're forcing arbitration for, uh, you know, for everything." Oh, my controller is completely fucked. Um, I'm totally distracted because everything is so fucked up. Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're trying to wheels their way out of it, and that's fucking shady. In other words, in case people are not in the know, what this means is instead of going to an actual unbiased court, they're doing an internal hearing inside the company for the stuff, a.k.a., hey, we can wash our hands clean. Even yeah. if we find ourselves wrong or done with wrongdoing, it legally will not come to it. We'll just pay people out of pocket. Yep. So, uh, yeah, that's fucking shady. 
Uh, but Riot has been in hot water with uh, gender issues for a long, long, long ass time. And this is just more of the same. So if you're looking for a nice, equitable game company to work for, uh, Riot is probably not your first stop. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that with Riot. There, there's a lot more there that you can read into and look into. Um, I don't think that this is the place to get into that, though. No. And I'm not saying that to, like, cop out, but, like, look Context. into who Riot is. Look who is who Riot is, where they're based, and start looking into what I'm talking about. I'm not going to put us there, though. Contact your employment lawyers with any questions. <laughs> anyway, um, final story. This one's a fun, weird one that's going to cost Tom a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> Valve is seriously experimenting with brain control interfaces. Play video games with your brain. So this is really fucking cool. Apparently, like, they have psychologists and programmers working on this shit inside of Valve itself. Um, So it's literally an EEG net headset thing that you wear on your head, and it reads your brain waves to to do stuff in a video game, turns your brain into a controller. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is still really early days for this technology. It's not going to be out tomorrow or next year or in 2022. Like, this is future stuff that Valve is working on. But they are seriously working on it, which is really neat. The other thing they're looking into is not only the read aspect of reading your brainwaves to make things happen in a computer game. They're looking at the write aspect. Um, Gabe has a quote in here that says, yeah, the, the science behind like writing stuff to your head to remove things like VR motion sickness, the science is pretty easy. The regulatory aspects around us writing stuff to people's brains is, uh, not so easy. Um, so if you've played Cyberpunk 2077, uh, you've seen like the, the brain dance, uh, sort of stuff that they've got in that world. Yeah, it's that kind of sci-fi stuff that Valve is talking about doing, like inserting emotions and feelings, uh, physical and like mental, emotional feelings into a person's head while they're playing a game. Um, what? Sign <laughs> me the fuck up. What? Like if, if, you played, if you played Red Dead Redemption 2 or Final Fantasy 15 and you see that amazing looking food, yeah, you want to taste that shit? Here the fuck you go. Enjoy. Sign you're, me the fuck up. Um, you're you playing actually, Call of Duty and you want to feel what a 50 cal feels like to get shot by? <laughs> Sign me the fuck <laughs> up. Um, you playing The Last of Us 2 at all? And you want to experience any of that? Get, get, no, I'll pass. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so I am all down on brain control. Like they read your waves and you control a game. Soon as you start manipulating my brain... Man, nope. we're, we're in a different ball game. I, nope. I don't think I'm down for that. <laughs> I'm watching up Black Mirror to know where that shit goes. Yeah. <laughs> Jack my consciousness out and put it in the net, man. Like, I, I am in. Make me a Square Enix microtransaction. I, I am ready for this future. Um, so. Like, you think it's painful when hackers get into your fucking bank accounts? They can get into your fucking brain. Tom's going to be am, Cypher from the so Matrix and making deals with the AI machines. Damn right I am. Making deals, I might act- I'm going to be the AI machine. <laughs> Fuck that. I might have to actually go off the fucking grid. Like, th- this shit's nutty. I, uh, yeah. And, and Valve, uh, like, Gabe is not an idiot. Valve is not a company full of idiots. They even say, like, in this interview, the bottom section is... Yeah, here's all the ways that this technology can be really problematic and super dangerous. And, you know, we're we're all going to have to try to figure out ways around this before it gets too far into the other direction. But, hey, wouldn't this be really fucking cool to just, like, put somebody into a video game for a little bit? Like, shit, that sounds great. In the utopian uh, world, it would be the best gaming experience ever. Yeah. In a dystopian world, it would ruin your fucking life. <laughs> And in reality, it's probably going to be somewhere in the middle. Um, yeah. It's also going to be a ways we, off. Oh, yeah. yeah. So right now, you can get a, like, alpha build level headset. Like, everything all-inclusive for about three grand. It's not cheap. It is literally meant for researchers. If you want to play with, uh, like, neurological research 
you can, and you can buy all this hardware for about three grand, which, I mean, that's kind of amazing in and of itself. You don't need a research grant and $300,000. You need $3,000 and a computer. And that's it. Oh, and by the way, all this shit is open source. Like, it's it's all out there. It's completely public, or public and published. You can just fucking print your own headset if you want to. You get your own so, wiring, you get a 3D printer, you just print this shit. So you remember how awful malware and viruses and Trojan and all that bullshit was when people first discovered Kazaa and Bear Share and shit? Just reimagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Only infecting your body. No big deal. I, I am oh so, so into this. Like, okay, don't get me wrong. Half-Life Alex was one of the most immersive VR games I have ever played. One of the most immersive games I have ever played. Hook that shit directly up to my <laughs> spinal column and put me in there, Gabe. I am ready. I need more Half-Life in my physical bodily life. Jesus. But yeah. Um, so that's that. It's really fucking awesome tech that's probably in about seven years we'll be talking about a second alpha version of it because come on, we're not getting this before like twenty forty. But and it's in about, really cool tech and it's awesome they're working on it. To say in about fifteen years you can look forward to the full review on this podcast when I finish wiring my brain directly up to my gaming PC to play Half Life Three. Getting step-by-step -step instructions fed to him through his Google Glass. Yep. <laughs> that's right. Anyway. Um, Tom, do you, still have, do you still have that? Yeah. yeah When's the last time you used it? Well, you see, it hasn't gotten security updates in years and years and years. So Does it just I brick it, basically? No, nah, it doesn't brick it, but it's like running an Android phone that hasn't been patched in like six years. Um, not a good idea. So, uh, yeah, it sits, it sits in a drawer and it gets no use. Okay. That yeah, was kind of cool at the time. That. Yeah, oh, it was great. I, uh, I do not regret buying it at all. Yeah, that was when you were going to uh, I.O. pretty early or pretty often. Yep. Like, you went like two or three years in a row, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. At, at the time, I don't know if this is still a case, but at the time they had a, uh, a nice student package. Um. So you could get tickets on the cheap. And at the time, Google I.O. gave you like a thousand bucks worth of free bullshit Google hardware every time you went. So I left uh, I.O. 2012 with like 1500 bucks worth of gear on a $300 student ticket. Um, pretty decent investment, if I do say so myself. Yeah. You walked away with a new phone every year. Yeah, I did. And the, the one year it, it was really the phone I had just bought. Yeah, brand new flagship <laughs> phone. That's pretty cool. It was, it, they literally had look under your chair moments. Like, <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, and here's here's our new Galaxy Nexus device. The hottest phone on the market for a reasonable price. And if you reach under your seat right now, you can just start playing with Jesus. it. And everyone's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it was, Google I.O. was goddamn nuts. Was Oprah there or something? It was uh, Oprah of the tech world. Yeah, basically. Uh, so, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to brain interfaces. Uh, the thing that people aren't really talking about, though, and I, I don't want to leave this on the table. This is fucking huge for accessibility. Like right now we have Microsoft, um, like gaming can be divisive, right? You've got everything from swatting. You've got microtransactions. You've got bullshit companies. You've got like review manipulation. There's a lot of bad in gaming, but generally one of the just unending bright spots is how much companies are working together to make their games more accessible. Everything from colorblind modes to Microsoft putting out physical fucking hardware for people who have, uh, have like motion issues to make sure that, Hey, you want to play, uh, you want to play Halo? Here you go. Plug in this accessible controller with a bunch of different pieces into your Xbox, play whatever the fuck you want. Enjoy. And, and accessibility is getting better and better. These dude, the Last of Us 2's accessibility options were insane. Uh, yeah. There were so, there like, was so much there for so many different types of even issues. Even I, Hitman 3, which doesn't have great accessibility options, but the first thing you're presented with is, hey, here's your subtitle options, and here's how you can like make things uh, bigger on the screen so they're easier to read. I was playing on my couch, and I wanted big-ass subtitles. 
drag that shit over and it just fucking works. It's great. But these these brain control interfaces mean that you know as as long as your head works okay, you can play a game, right? Like Rocket League requires a pretty dexterous amount of control on this guy and some people unfortunately just don't have that ability. If Rocket League had a BCI interface, slap that net on your head and get to get to grinding, man. Yeah, I think the best thing we have right now is what Microsoft's doing with like their adaptive controller yeah. options on their platform, which I don't know if you haven't seen that shit, look into what they're doing with their adaptive controllers. That it's shit is so awesome. Cool. So fucking cool. It is so, yeah. a shining light in the gaming industry. Yeah. Yeah, I I will always have an amount of respect. Like I as much as I complain about Microsoft, when it comes to the accessibility stuff, man, they are un paralleled in the gaming industry love to see it yeah well anyway um not to get us off the high road because that, that felt really nice that's a nice way to yeah. end so you know yeah. what let's then yeah so for all you out here watching yeah. us on Twitch, thank you we uh we do have a youtube 72 pin connector where we put all of our podcasts our plays of the month and some clips whenever i'm not a lazy ass and other various stuff so you should go out there and check that out sometime if you're watching this podcast there, thank you. We appreciate it. But Twitch is where you should really be watching us. Live every Saturday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. It is hands down the best way to consume our podcast. You could be in the chat, be in the conversation, sniper lobbies, be in the game. It's just an all-out good time. We also have a Discord where we play all sorts of games, such as Slapshot Rebound, Dota 2, Rocket League, all sorts of different shit. And if you're thinking, well, Eric, that sounds great, but how do I get into this Discord? Well, you go to 72 pinkconnectorcom and everything's there. Our Discord, our swag shop, buy our shit, our YouTube, our Twitch. It's all there. So just head over to 72 pinkconnectorcom and get you where you need. And all that said, I think that's all we got for you guys this week. So until next week, game on. See you, everybody.